Free agency has been a roller coaster for the Philadelphia Eagles, but one of the more subtle moves made was bringing back corner Jalen Mills and switching his position. The Green Goblin will be entering 2020 at the same position in which he originally entered the NFL draft process, competing at safety alongside Rodney McLeod, Will Parks and Marcus Epps. Some fans have been clamouring for this move for quite some time and others were quite open to the idea given that Mills of course did have some starting experience during his time at LSU and had flashed some safety like instincts while some corner like deficiencies during his time as a starter with the Eagles. But on a conference call with the media earlier this week, Jalen Mills cited one game in particular in 2019 that sparked all of this, that sparked a potential return to the Eagles at safety and it was against the New England Patriots and for those of you that don't remember they they, they lost that game 17 10 they went up 10 nothing and they they lost seven ignore that mill stated that during that game schwartz moved him around to a multitude of different spots and he felt he had his best game of 2019 so i decided to go back and look at that game and see what evidence was there on tape what did the eagles see during that game which prompted them to move jalen mills to safety my name is liam jenkins and this is another episode of eagles film room Before we get started though guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. If you're new around here, congratulations, you have been selected with the 21st overall pick and you're our new shiny wide receiver joining our all-star offensive subscribers. All we need you to do is run a go route and catch that deep subscribe touchdown, join the PSN family and you are more than welcome to join our Discord server down below to make some new friends and talk Eagles 24-7 and as always, get your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage from phillysportsnetwork.com. Now before we turn to the tape, let's just add some context to this because Jalen Mills had spent most of the 29 season battling a Liz Frank injury, sat watching the secondary be scolded week in and week out. And he returned in relatively impressive fashion. He played some of his best football as an eagle, in my opinion. There was some discipline, the new found patience to his game. But this one in particular really stood out. And all you've got to do is go to Pro Football Focus to look at where he played his snaps. Now, he still played 58% at left corner. Obviously, on the right-hand side, you've got my favourite person in the world. But he played 13 in the slot, 13 in the box, 4 on the defensive line, and 1 single snap as a free safety. Now, during that time, he was targeted 9 times, giving up 3 catches for 11 yards. Now, that, out of context, sounds very good. In context, we're going to get to why that's a little bit misleading. But there's one thing that's very clear in the way that Jalen Mills was moved around that defence. He was used much more as a Swiss army knife and if the Eagles did see enough that game which we're assuming they have then it may well have prompted that move. Now it's also worth noting that in 2017 his last fully healthy season he produced 23 run stops despite being a primary outside cornerback. We know Jalen Mills is a secure tackler. We know that's a clear foundation in his game and something the Eagles may finally be looking to build on. What's even more intriguing is that when you position him next to Malcolm Jenkins and compare their heights and weight and that sort of thing, there's a difference of around 13 pounds, but they're the exact same height. So you've got a very similar mold of player. Someone that has been around this system for quite some time, that is a clear rah-rah guy, a vocal leader, even when injured, that understands the ins and outs of this defense and is now beginning to see a slightly greater role. But what does that look like on tape? That's the big thing. Well, let's take a look at the very opening play defensively of that game. Jalen Mills is clearly in the run fit here. He's lined up over the B gap and just look at his eyes. He's constantly looking in the backfield. Brady chucks the ball off and the man actually making the tackle is Jalen Mills who goes sideline to sideline very quickly. And the one thing that if you're going to play in the box as an Eagles safety, you have to be capable of, it's showing great range. And Mills doesn't have good long speed, but instinctively, I think he's got enough to understand leverage. Instead of going horizontally at him, he kind of tries to close over the top and comes away making a tackle. And that bit's in important because he understands now the intricacies of this defense. So if we take this play for example, now the Eagles are running cover one and what the Patriots decide to do is essentially run a mesh concept with a vertical route in order to take Jalen Mills out of the 
game and create space underneath. Mills turns his head for the ball, sees this, comes back down and helps Ronald Darby make a tackle on the crosser. He nullifies that gain. It's an impressive instinct for a cornerback to have and you saw that a lot in Jalen Mills' game in 2019. There's the crosser, Darby loses leverage but Mills peels off in the same way that Darius Slade does so well to come down and make a play. Instincts are a big part of a move to safety. Now it's third and 17 here and what we're going to see from Jalen Mills is a close down on a screen. Again, he's lined up in the box. He's essentially one of those three linebackers in inverted commas. Now what the Patriots are going to do is try to overwhelm the middle of the field. We're going to see an RPA fake. We're going to see a bubble screen fake and then Brady's going to roll back and hit the other direction trying to get underneath. And we've seen the Eagles do this, which may just be why Jalen Mills sniffs this out so quickly because he's seen it before from his own offense. So watch Jalen Mills say leverages space well, sees the blockers come crashing down and knock that ball out. There wasn't even hesitation. That wasn't an accident that you saw from Jalen Mills. If you watch his play again, just comes crashing down onto it, gets in the path of the ball and snuffs it out. So while we're talking of in the box play, one of the big things Malcolm Jenkins does well is sniff out the run and is able to just come crashing down like a sea of hatred on whoever tries to run the ball against him. So let's watch how Jalen Mills does here. He's actually lined up outside shaded coverage over Jacoby Myers. So he's in the run fit. His eyes are in the backfield. Myers moves across and watch that he doesn't take the bait. Instead puts his eyes back in the backfield, sees Burkhead's cut, adjusts, squares up and goes straight for the legs. That's a solid tackle. It's as good as they come and he uses space well. This next play in the game, before it all went to hell and the Eagles choked yet another lead, on first and ten at around midfield, Jalen Mills once again contributes in run defense. He's lined up over a slightly bigger body. The receiver moves inside and he's able to pick out the blocking scheme and again come down and make a tackle. And as someone that's going to play in the box in that hybrid role, that's what he's expected to do. So watch it from this view. Myers rolls inside and because he engages with Jenkins, this opens up the gap for Mills. He's got to fill this like a linebacker. If your name's Rex Burkhead, all you've got to do is make two decisions. Do you try and bounce outside and attack Jalen Mills or is Camu Grugier Hill going to take the bait? The answer is no for Camu Grugier Hill, which means Jalen Mills has got to plug that hole and he's got to do it quick. And he comes crashing down and makes a big time tackle. That's impressive. Now, the other thing he'll be asked to do is, of course, match up against tight ends. And I actually think this is going to benefit him quite well. It's third and six here and we're going to see him line up over six foot three tight end Benjamin Watson. Someone who's been around the NFL for quite some time. Mills here, because he doesn't have to worry about that long speed as much as opposed to lining up against more elusive wide receivers, he can feel his way down the route. Now, he wasn't targeted there, but he essentially took Watson out of the play. He opened his hips early, allowed him that inside leverage and just closed over the top because, well, he can. He doesn't have to worry about getting beaten or being burned by a tight end because he can keep up with them. It's more the WR2s and the slot guys that are going to burn him all day long. And we know Mills has some swagger about him. So look at this play. He makes a call out here. He sees the pre-snap motion by the Patriots. He knows he's got to pick up Watson on a rug route and he just carries him all the way to the end zone. There's not a single moment of doubt. He's basically jogging. He's staying inside the hip pocket at the tight end. He's not having to turn and look for the ball. It's very good. There's another example here where he actually gets hit with another pick play. This time he's lining up in the slot and right here he's got to decide because the receiver's moving outside. He crashes down. If he doesn't sense the corner next to him, he's going to end up in a collision. It's a wide open play. He instinctively runs around the outside, runs an arc, closes over the top. Brady can't go that direction. And down inside the red zone, he's lined up in the box here once again. I see him pick up another route bleeding to the outside and he's just able to push it out of bounds and make sure it falls out of harm's way. He's got the playbook instincts down. He's got the responsibility aspect that Jenkins brought to a very young, very inexperienced secondary down. There's no doubt in that part. The only problem problem with Mills' game was that he was a little bit inathletic in comparison to someone like a Ronald Darby who lacked the functional strength that Jalen Mills does. That doesn't mean this game was perfect. I mean, he misses a tackle there, just gets shoved out of it by Jacoby Myers. It's not great. And if we're talking cornerback snaps, since he is a cornerback, I mean, it wasn't fantastic. Like this play right here, he's got a hand on the receiver and somehow ends up opening a distance before having to close back over the top by the time the ball's already hauled in. He makes a stop. There was no real reason to open up that kind of distance. Now, lining up against Julian Edelman, he tries to get his hand on him, and unless he's passing that off to a safety and a curl and flat responsibility, 
which it looks like he's doing, there's no reason to get that grabby. You're just trying to shrug it off and disrupt the route. You shouldn't be going that hard on a press. Talking of which, we're going to see another example, and that's why I mentioned these PFS stats being contextual, because Julian Edelman right here, he does three steps, pushes inside, Jalen Mills on his back foot, tries to get a hand on, it's too late, Edelman's not a quick guy, and he drops the pass. That could have been a touchdown, it could have been a huge gain, luckily for Jalen Mills it wasn't. There's another example here of him being beaten at the line of scrimmage, and I don't think it's the long speed, he just kind of trips over himself, and look at the space that Myers has there, and somehow Tom Brady decides to go for a far more difficult pass, but it is what it is. Now this is the one that really stuck out to me when those PFF stats came up, because I just didn't remember that game being so impressive and flashy from Mills. He's got to move into the slot and pick up Julian Edelman, which as we know from earlier clips has been a slightly problematic matchup all game. Similar sort of thing. Edelman's going to graze inside, try and hit him with a move. Mills can stick with him because speed isn't needed. And right here, Edelman turns back for the ball. So Mills does the same. That's good. That's instinctive. Terrible jump in reality because Edelman's got it. And if Edelman catches that and turns, it's a touchdown and somehow he drops it. It was a poorly timed jump. I respect the hustle. I love the instinct. I like the athleticism. But it wasn't great. And I mean, there were times when he played really, really well in coverage and got sticky. And that's impressive. But we know that in an overall sample size, it's not his strength. I think this game for me highlighted a weakness at the line of scrimmage. A weakness in getting back deep where he got very, very lucky not to be burned a couple of times. But a strength inside the box to say, hey, I can handle increased responsibility. I can handle getting guys lined up or in-play adjustments. And I can maybe take over the legacy that Malcolm Jenkins has left. And for that reason, do you know what? This game wasn't perfect. It wasn't the flashiest. It wasn't the best by any means. But it was enough to at least have confidence in moving a guy to a more hybrid role. And I'm all for Jim Schwartz taking a chance on Mills, keeping him around. We know what he's like for the locker room. I'm excited to see what he can do as a safety, guys. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below from myself, Liam Jenkins. If you enjoyed this video, please stick around. Hit that subscribe button, especially at a time like this. The support means absolutely everything. I will see you next time.